Questions About War podcast, production by Lynn and Dave, based on information from a YouTube video by Denis Davidoff. Preview YouTube video, update from Ukraine, why the peace talks will fail with Putin, no peace agreement is possible. You can find his video on YouTube at Denis Davidoff. Uh, Questions About War podcast is produced by Lynn and Dave for entertainment purposes. On YouTube, our channel is at Life, Birth to Death by Lynn. Dave has Parkinson's disease and often uses AI to help him think and analyze information that he sees on videos or hears in the news. Lynn is Dave's wife and caregiver and helps create Dave's production ideas so that Dave and anyone else who may be interested can view. Episode 16, Briefing on Potential Peace Talks Between Russia and Ukraine. Based on information from a YouTube video by Denis Davidoff. Introduction, is peace possible? AI, at this moment, the prospect of peace between Russia and Ukraine is not viable. The conflict remains deeply entrenched, and although there have been calls from various quarters for peace talks, the battlefield dynamics, political landscapes, and the strategic ambitions of both nations make this highly unlikely. A recent report from Reuters suggested that the war could potentially end by 2025 due to the evolving battlefield situation. This optimism is largely unfounded as military developments do not support such a claim. On the ground, Ukraine is not in a position of strength and the pressure from Russian forces has only increased. Thus, we must carefully evaluate the assumptions about the possibility of peace at this juncture and understand the risks and implications involved. Battlefield Realities, a grim picture for Ukraine. AI, the notion that Ukraine has a favorable battlefield position is misleading. While there was some optimism two months ago during a Ukrainian push near Kursk, that offensive has stalled. Currently, the Eastern Front is under severe pressure from Russian forces. Ukraine's military command has admitted that they are dealing with a standstill, and their ability to regain momentum is severely hampered by Russia's overwhelming numbers and continuous attacks. This creates a significant problem for Ukraine. The country's military already stretched thin faces constant attrition in both manpower and equipment. Conversations with Ukrainian soldiers paint a grim picture. There is no optimism that the situation on the front lines is improving in their favor. In fact, many in the Ukrainian military express deep concern over the risks they now face, particularly as their Western support becomes less reliable. The battlefield remains a primary consideration for any peace negotiations. The more territory Russia seizes or holds, the more emboldened it becomes to demand substantial concessions from Ukraine. Moscow's insistence on annexing territories like Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk, and Lohansk is a clear indication that any peace talks would likely involve severe territorial compromises, something Ukraine simply cannot afford to concede without sparking internal unrest. Ukrainian leadership under pressure between allies and soldiers. AI. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is under tremendous pressure from his Western allies to pursue peace talks, but his position remains steadfast. No negotiations with Vladimir Putin and no concessions of Ukrainian territory. Zelensky's government introduced a ban on any direct talks with Putin, a reflection of how deeply the Ukrainian government mistrusts Russia's intentions. This defiance of peace talks is not just a political posture, it is driven by the realities of the war and the sentiments within Ukraine itself. Should Zelensky pursue a peace agreement involving territorial concessions, he would face an existential threat, not only from political opponents, but from within Ukraine's military community itself. There have been credible reports that if Zelensky were to sign an agreement with Russia that involves giving up parts of Ukraine, it could lead to an internal revolt or even revolution. The military, which has borne the brunt of Russia's aggression, would see any such concession as a betrayal of their sacrifice and mission. At the same time, Zelensky must balance these internal pressures with the demands of his international allies. Western countries facing economic and political strain are growing weary of an open-ended conflict. European nations in particular are feeling the impact of energy disruptions, refugee crises, and rising inflation due to the war. While public support for Ukraine remains strong, political leaders in countries like Germany and France are increasingly vocal about the need for a negotiated settlement. This creates a dangerous dynamic for Zelensky, where he is pushed toward peace talks externally, but restrained by internal opposition.
Russian ambitions. Why peace is unlikely. AI. Any realistic assessment of peace talks must consider Russian intentions. Russia's goals in Ukraine go beyond the annexation of a few regions. President Vladimir Putin has long harbored ambitions to reestablish Russian dominance over the former Soviet space, and Ukraine is at the heart of this vision. To Putin, Kiev is not just a Ukrainian capital. It is a central part of the historical and cultural narrative of Russia. He views Ukraine as an illegitimate Western-backed experiment in statehood that must be corrected. Putin's demands make it clear that Russia is not interested in any genuine compromise. Moscow has repeatedly stated that Ukraine must cede the four occupied regions, Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk, and Luhansk, in order to end the conflict. These demands were reaffirmed just days ago by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, indicating that the Kremlin's position remains unchanged. These demands are effectively tantamount to asking Ukraine to surrender, and no Ukrainian government could survive such an agreement politically. Russia's broader strategy is to exhaust Ukraine militarily, isolate it from Western support, and gradually reassert control over the entire country. This has been evident from the beginning of the conflict when Putin launched a full-scale invasion, expecting a quick and decisive victory. Although that plan failed, Russia shifted its strategy to one of attrition. Putin appears willing to continue the war indefinitely, betting that Western fatigue and internal divisions in Ukraine will eventually force Kiev to the negotiating table on Moscow's terms. Western support waning or enduring. AI. One of the critical factors in determining whether peace talks are possible is the level of continued Western support for Ukraine. Over the past year, military aid has flowed into Ukraine from NATO allies, particularly the United States. However, recent developments suggest this support may not be as robust moving forward. The U.S. Congress amid internal political divisions blocked a critical military aid bill for Ukraine. This has slowed Ukraine's ability to prepare for its summer campaign, and the delay has had ripple effects on the battlefield. Additionally, as the 2024 U.S. presidential election looms, the potential for significant shifts in U.S. policy toward Ukraine is increasing. Former President Donald Trump, who remains influential within the Republican Party, has openly questioned U.S. support for Ukraine, advocating for a deal that would likely involve Ukraine ceding territory to Russia. Such a stance could gain traction if Trump or a similar candidate wins the presidency. European support for Ukraine is also not guaranteed to last indefinitely. While countries like Poland and the Baltic states remain staunch supporters, other nations are more cautious. Hungary, under Viktor Orban, has openly opposed Ukraine's NATO membership and has blocked EU sanctions on Russia. Slovakia, recently led by pro-Russian political forces, may also weaken its support for Ukraine. These internal European divisions make it difficult to present a unified front against Russian aggression. At the same time, there are signs that Russia is leveraging its influence through far-right political movements in Europe and the U.S., weakening the Western alliance, Far-right parties in Italy, Hungary, and elsewhere have capitalized on the economic and social costs of the war to push anti-Ukraine, pro-Russia agendas. Russia's strategy is clear to exploit political divisions within the West to erode support for Ukraine, thereby weakening Kyiv's position. The Role of NATO, the Only Viable Security Guarantee AI for Ukraine, the long-term path to peace lies in security guarantees, and the most robust of these is NATO membership. Without NATO's Article 5 Collective Defense Guarantee, Ukraine will remain vulnerable to future Russian aggression. The current conflict is in many ways a consequence of the failure of pre previous security agreements, like the 1994 Budapest Memorandum, which failed to prevent Russia's annexation of Crimea or the current invasion. While many Western nations recognize that NATO membership is the only sustainable solution for Ukraine, there are significant political hurdles. Countries like Hungary and Turkey have expressed opposition to Ukraine joining the alliance, fearing that it could trigger a direct conflict with Russia. However, the risks of Ukraine remaining outside NATO are far greater. Without NATO protection, Ukraine would be forced to either permanently cede territory or fight an unending war of attrition with Russia. In contrast, NATO membership would dramatically shift the balance of power. The deterrence factor of Article 5 would likely prevent further Russian aggression, as Moscow would be unwilling to engage in a direct war with the entire NATO alliance. This would bring Ukraine long-term stability and peace, but achieving this goal requires overcoming internal opposition within NATO. Russia's long-term strategy, why they won't stop. AI. 
Even if the current war ends in a stalemate or a temporary ceasefire, Russia will not stop its aggression. The war is not just about Ukraine. It is about Russia's broader ambition to reshape the post-Soviet space. Putin's desire to restore Russian influence over former Soviet republics like Belarus, Georgia, and Moldova has been a central theme of his foreign policy. This expansionist agenda will not be satisfied with partial victories in Ukraine. Russia's history provides a clear warning. In the early 2000s, Putin waged a brutal war to subjugate Chechnya, which had declared independence after the collapse of the Soviet Union. After initial setbacks, Russia ultimately installed a pro-Kremlin government in Chechnya, led by Ramzan Kadyrov, who now controls the region with an iron fist. The same playbook could be used in Ukraine, where Russia may attempt to install a puppet government in occupied regions if Ukraine is forced into a peace deal. Furthermore, Russia's military has shown a willingness to endure extreme losses in pursuit of its objectives. Putin has sacrificed hundreds of thousands of Russian soldiers, and there is no indication that he is willing to stop. Russia's economy, though weakened by sanctions, continues to function, largely thanks to support from China and other non-Western nations. Conclusion. Why peace talks are impossible. AI. Given the current realities on the ground and the strategic goals of Russia, peace talks are not a realistic option at this time. For Ukraine, entering negotiations under the current conditions would likely result in territorial losses, internal unrest, and continued vulnerability to future Russian aggression. For Russia, any peace agreement would be viewed as a temporary measure until it can regroup and renew its assault. The only viable path. Join us next time on Questions About War podcast. Dave feeds material into AI, chat GPT in this episode, which is taking the information, analyzing and summarizing to make it easier to fully understand. Denis Davidov's video is paramount to understand what's going on in Ukraine and the outcome will be consequential to Europe and to the United States. Dave requested AI to prepare this briefing so it would be good enough to present to the United States President.